Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmLife.com. If you are a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure you can do this homeschool thing. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there are just too many things to do. Or if you are a homeschool mama unsure that the way you're showing up in your homeschool isn't the way you want to be showing up in your homeschool, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to encourage you in your homeschool journey to help you strategize ways to turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. So welcome, homeschool mama. Hey, you. Let's chat about the S question. Homeschool socialization. Are your kids socialized? In our last Homeschool Mama book club, we discussed Rachel Gather Cole's book, The Well-Adjusted Child, The Social Benefits of Homeschooling. At the end of this book, she summarized her thoughts on the socialization question. I think she sums it up perfectly. Whether a child is homeschooled, conventionally schooled, or otherwise, it is the family who is ultimately responsible for the child's education and socialization. It is in the family that the entire foundation for the child's future success and happiness is laid. Like the family, mass culture is made up of individual human beings. When we deal with society, we can see it either as a cold, lonely mass of nameless, meaningless faces, or we can approach each person as individual. When we walk into a company office to work, for example, it matters not whether we have ever set foot in a classroom full of kids our own age. But whether we have the skills and compassion to do our jobs and to interact and resolve issues with other individuals with creativity, understanding, and integrity. Homeschooling offers children the opportunity to learn these skills through years of guidance and practice in living and resolving conflicts with people they love, care about, and must continue to live with every day for many years. And ultimately, both the skills and the relationships built in this manner will remain with the child into adulthood. Well said, Mrs. Gathercole. But before we get started with the discussion on socialization, have you got your earbuds in? I want to share a comment from a fellow listener, J.L. Patterson. J.L. said, I get to decide who those others are that are influencing my homeschooled kids and how they influence my family. Well said. Bingo. Spot on. What more can I say? He said that in response to what I wrote about homeschool socialization and what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So thank you, JL. By the way, this podcast is brought to you by me, the homeschool mama, the one that is helping you to show up on purpose in your homeschool to nurture the nurturer. I've been producing, editing, creating community around this podcast for 66 episodes. It has been so much fun. Kind of like my experience as a kid when I grabbed a tape recorder and a tape and pretended to record radio shows. Now I get to do this as a grown-up. If you would like to support this podcast, I would ask that you would contribute to the Buy Me a Coffee link that's found on the podcast show notes page at www.capturingthecharmlife.com. So what's been happening in your homeschool? This is what has been happening in mine. So this morning I wake up and probably for the last two or three days, it is so cold that I'm having a hard time opening the goat barn door. I have to kick open the little chicken door. It is stuck tight. And there's frost on the ground even until almost 11 o'clock in the morning. Winter is coming. Now, my son loves that. My son prefers winter over summer. He loves to play outside. He loves to sled. He doesn't love cross-country skiing nearly as much as I do. But I'm looking forward to cross-country skiing just because I love those cozy moments in that skiing hut with hot chocolate, a read aloud, and muffins. But in the meantime... I have actually had something wildly different. Unlike most of my homeschool days, I have been entirely alone for, I don't know, 24 hours. And when once I thought, dang, how am I going to be alone? 
I'm so accustomed to having someone around me. Yeah, I'm good. I actually really enjoy this. And also the kitchen stays clean. Hmm, interesting, but the floors are not. Might be due to my owning a barn and a chicken coop. And also I let the goats off last night and one of them actually came into the house. Don't tell my husband. So what's been happening in your homeschool? I'd like to hear about your homeschool. You can email me at TeresaWiedrich at Outlook.com or you can connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. I most certainly would love to hear your thoughts about today's episode, about the discussion on homeschool socialization, and you can share that voice message with me on the SpeakPipe app found on the show notes page on my website, Capturing the Charm Life. From one homeschool mama to another, if you want to do this homeschool thing over the long term, I encourage you to take care of yourself, to nurture the nurturer. What I've been doing to take care of me, two things come to mind. I'm actually using the diffuser and essential oils that I was given for my birthday last year. And I think I missed out on this essential oils thing over the last decade. I think essential oils are kind of like the Tupperware of the 1980s. And I kind of thought it was overrated until I began to do my research. I've been including the diffuser in the homeschool room when we work together in the mornings. I've been putting a little lemon oil inside that diffuser. And my son, my 12 year old son, almost 13, said to me, mom, can I have a diffuser for Christmas? And I said, really? Like every year for the last 12 years, I've bought a Lego set and now he wants an essential oils diffuser? The very same day, my 18 year old had told me, I think I'd like an essential oils diffuser for Christmas. Huh, really? Okay, essential oils are taking my home by storm. Out of pure curiosity, I asked for a diffuser for my birthday last year and now I'm using it. I really enjoy peppermint oil. It just enlivens my mind and lavender feels, well, it's lavender, so it's always so relaxing. And there's a reason that I've planted so much lavender in my gardens. I love it in the diffuser, but I also love it in actual bouquets of lavender. I love sending lavender. I like trying to make my own lavender essential oils, which I'm really sure isn't really as good as what I could find maybe at Young Living. I recently interviewed Kristen Mercer at Mercentials for my podcast, and you're going to hear that in the upcoming few weeks. And after that interview, I thought I should be using essential oils. I'm really curious if you have been on the essential oils wagon for a lot longer than me. These days, I've also been putting together a five-day nutrition challenge for homeschool mamas, and it starts today. But if you hear this anytime after, within the couple weeks afterward, you can still sign up. You will find five letters in your inbox for practical tips practical things that you can actually use that are simple and that are actionable and that are even fun, including your homeschooled kids. I'm going live for five days. You are invited into my kitchen at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Even if you don't hear about this till it's already started, you can still access the tips and ideas. You can view the live event still on the Facebook group at Homeschool Mama Self Care, and you are most definitely invited to join me. It'll be five days of encouraging tips to address your concerns about good nutrition. But here's the thing. I actually think that most people could teach a course on nutrition. Most likely, you already know how you should be eating. It's are you actually doing the things that you know you should be doing? And maybe it's surprising to you, but I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to tell you to do them, nor do I think that you should do them. I'm not always doing them. I actually think we know what the best way to choose healthy foods are, and there are times that we just don't. But I think that when we become more self-aware, we're paying attention to why we're eating, what we're eating, when we're eating, and how it actually makes us feel, we will continue to make better choices as time goes by. But I won't just talk about simple nutrition. I'm going to be talking about fueling your morning, which we definitely all need as homeschool moms pretty much since our feet hit the ground. I'm going to discuss the concept of anti-inflammatory foods, incorporating fresh ideas into our poetry tea times or our read aloud times or our bedtime routines. I'm going to talk about increasing our immunity 
during poetry tea time, maybe for lunch, and I'm going to include a Charlotte Mason activity as well that the kids are going to enjoy. We're going to talk about snack choices and definitely teaching kids to cook, menu planning, you're going to have options for cooking demonstrations that you can access after this challenge, and discuss grocery shopping. So many benefits to grocery shopping for kids learning grocery store math. And you'll have six opportunities to win my book, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer, too. So come on over to the Instagram page, Homeschool Mama Self-Care. And in the link in my bio, the very first thing you can do is join the five-day nutrition challenge. Oh, or over at the Facebook page at Homeschool Mama Self-Care and ask to join the group at Homeschool Mama Support Group. Hey, and I want to share a practical thing for your homeschool too, almost like a little homeschool mama show and tell, something that I purchase for my kids at around the grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, maybe grade seven age is a day timer. I get them thinking about how they want to structure their days or their time. Now, I know we don't all like a lot of structure, so that's not actually the point. Now, it's twofold. It's a benefit because I actually encourage my kids to write down their own reading. So if they are reading a passage from a book, when they have finished reading a book, I get them to write down the title and the author. I'll also have them write down what they did in the day. If they did some of their math on a certain lesson page, I will have them write that down. Or if they have watched a YouTube video on something that they wanted to learn or history book or like all the things that we do, I have them write it down. And obviously in the beginning, it's not seamless. There's a lot of stuff missed. It actually helps them to think through what they're doing it helps them learn to engage their time intentionally. Of course, I do this based on the specific child. I am not doing it if I think that they really can't do this thing. And then I wouldn't expect them to fill in a journal if they really just can't do it. But I also sometimes am walking alongside them and saying, hey, would you write down what you just read? Or would you write down that we were talking about this current affairs discussion or that we did this writing on the federal government's postal system or whatever it is that we've been doing? It helps me at the end of the year to see all the interesting things that we've done. Okay, so let's get to the conversation. Let's chat about homeschool socialization. So what about homeschool socialization? What's all the fuss about the S question anyway? Here's my truth behind homeschool socialization, and it may surprise you. Once upon a time, my four kids and I were hanging out at a cafe during a school day. Our homeschool family had traveled to a new town in northern British Columbia, so we decided to wander the town, like kind of a mini field trip. The roasted bean fragrance from the street lured me into that trendy cafe. Stranger watching amused me, but the fireplace is what kept us there on that January winter day. I finished my nonfat cappuccino. The kids finished their Schweppes. We were at the end of our Professor Noggin's Ocean card game, and a middle-aged man walked up to our table and said, These all yours? This was a common question that I had heard repeatedly since my third daughter was born. A fourth child took the curiosity to a whole new level. So I'd heard the question so often that I'd finally given up on my sarcastic reactions. Yep, all mine, I said with a smile. Well, what a beautiful family you have. Surprised at his sincerity, I said a simple thank you. You have to tell me how you've done it. They're just all well behaved and good to each other. Not always, my friend, I think to myself. I wish his perception was my continual reality. Having said that, I could see that they considered each other, helped each other, spoke gently to each other lots of the time. Not all of the time, but lots of the time. I don't have a secret to socializing them. Of course, you knew that. But these are the things that I've learned about homeschool socialization through my kids. The first thing I've learned is that forced association is not socialization. Why are people worried about my children being socialized? Do my children have routine opportunities to spend seven hours with 24 other children for five days a week? No. Would I be happy hanging out with another 25 people every day if I could choose it? Def no. Yeah, I have to put an effort into connecting with others, 
but I get to decide who those others are and how they influence my family. One of my kiddos has learned how to come out of her shell. Others never owned a shell. Some have learned to give other kids a chance that they might not instinctively connect with. They're learning to be kind to others that aren't always kind to them, even their siblings. Some of them are learning to curb their sharp tongues with the assistance of their mama, but probably also learning sharp quips from her too. My kids are learning to consider their siblings. They're learning not to bicker, but instead talk through things and listen to each other's perspectives and feelings. This, I know, is a long game. Nothing revolutionary happening overnight for any of them in that department, just like it hasn't been for me. They're exposed to a regular community, of course, They regularly interact with adults, kids of all ages, parents of other kids, serve as strangers like post office personnel, grocery store people, cafe baristas, library people, and of course their music and their dance and their sports and their curling coaches. And they talk to them as comfortably as they are talking to me. We homeschool families do things differently, but we are not lone social islands. Second thought about kids' homeschool socialization is this. Who I am, my focus, my struggles, my idiosyncrasies, and my strengths do rub off on my children. I'm socializing them. Who else was I hoping they would mirror? They were born onto this earth because I chose to bear them because I wanted children. Who else should lead them and guide them and parent them? I didn't have them to turn them over to someone else to parent. Having said that, it's a misnomer to suggest that my children are mentored just by me. There are loads of people in their family and their community that shape who they are becoming youth leaders and dance teachers and soccer coaches and choir directors and friends and a whole lot of people. Suggest that they're picking up too many of my bad happens? I'm frickin' yeah. (laughs) Okay, that might be me. But when I see something negative reflecting back at me, I consider if there is something inward I need to look at. Sometimes it's them, not me. They are separate people indeed, but self-examination has been my consistent companion as I have parented my children. Third thought on homeschool socialization. Socialization and social opportunity are not the same things. Social opportunities abound. My children and most homeschooled kids that I know attend youth groups or hang out with friends or travel to new cities or countries, attend guitar and piano lessons, have homeschool co-ops or college classes. They have dance classes and gymnastic groups and choirs and swim lessons and soccer camps. And I could go on and on and on and on and on. We've got more time to be with each other now that we're actually homeschooling. Socialization opportunities also abound, of course, and is an ongoing effort. Teaching kindness, patience, consideration, a sharing generous spirit, these get taught in a million different ways every day. My children have siblings, therefore constant opportunities abound. They learn to be confident partly because I also am confident, generally, but I think mostly they become confident because they are listened to. They're looked into the eye. Eyeball to eyeball, they are seen and heard most of the time. They have an opportunity to spend time in a slow, organic way with the most important people in their lives. In other words, they know they're important because they are important in our lives. The fourth thing that I've observed about homeschool socialization is that what you see isn't always what you see. Nice kids are not always nice. Perfectly kind people don't exist. 
There are stories behind the stories in everyone's lives. My husband and I have had moments where our eyes are rolling, our heads are steaming. We have lost our stuff. We've had extreme deep breathing. We've had days or moments of trying not to yell or throw consequences around equal to my general consumption of Miss Vicky's potato chips. But we get to work at our socialization, us growing up and us learning how to relate to each other and to our kids as we help our kids learn how to do it too. The fifth thing I've observed about homeschool kids, much to the chagrin of most homeschooled kids, is that they're kind of different. Funny that when my kids were in school, complete strangers didn't ask me about my kids' socialization or make comments on how my children might be different. Yet at the core, all kids are different. We are all different. Curiously, homeschoolers are actually remarkably non-homogenous, though. Just like their school counterparts, but they're kind of more comfortable, generally, being less homogenous. So lumping us all together as homeschoolers into one giant group really does not accurately reflect us. When you think homeschooler, you might imagine Amish folks surrounded with 13 kiddos milking the cows in the morning and doing their sums on tree stumps in the afternoon sun. But in the homeschooling world, diversity exists too. Actually, I know that family with 13 kiddos. I know that family who milks cows. And I definitely have seen my own kids do arithmetic on tree stumps. I know families of 8 or 10 or 13. I also know families of 4 or 2 or singletons. I've met Muslim families, families that podcast, families that live in RVs, families that go to church, families that wouldn't dare. Surprise! There's a lot of different kind of homeschool families. Everyone is different. The only homeschool family that I haven't seen were couples without kids. Okay, wait, no. Actually, I've seen that aspiring homeschool family too. So studious. I've read of off-grid families. I tried to be one. I know computer coding urban families, suburban families, apartment dwelling families, 4-H families, traveling around the world families kind of did that. I've heard of acting families and families with aspiring Olympic athlete children and unschoolers canning kombucha with composting toilets. There is no homogeneity amongst homeschoolers. In the beginning, I didn't know this. I expected a homeschool social club where everyone hung out at the same time and same place every day, and they were like family. When my kids were in school, I knew that all families weren't identical, but we all showed up for the same events, signed the same consent forms, helped our kids with the same homework, so there was some commonality. As a homeschooler, I definitely knew we were considered different because people were asking about it all the time. But we're all different, right? Every family, homeschooled and schooled alike, come from different homes, have different values, laugh at different things, work at different things. The act of doing something not so mainstream, like homeschooling, does indeed make us different though. So different that we get plenty of time to think about why we're different, why we're doing what we're doing, and is it really worth all the effort swimming upstream? This is probably why our children look different. Our kids are learning that they are different because everyone's always asking us about our different lifestyle. Our family was not aspiring to be different. We were just honoring the differentness that we know we are and just being it. We just wanted a homeschool for freedom, freedom to personalize our kids' education, freedom to create our own social community, freedom to create our own schedule and to travel too. We're okay if you're different too. Actually, we kind of like it. It's interesting when everyone is different. How am I going to learn more about the world if we don't talk about things that make us different? Be you. The world is better for all of us when we are just being ourselves, accepting ourselves. The seventh thing that I've observed about homeschool socialization, the interpretation of what is socialization anyways, can be a very long discussion. I like to think about it as the opportunity to 
be kind or compassionate or to listen or to be patient or to all the things, all the things that we would love for our children to grow up to be and to enjoy in relationships from other people. That's the stuff we're hoping to enable our kids to be in our homeschools. Teaching kids kindness is socialization. Be it Muslim or Christian, Shambhala Buddhist or Hindu, agnostic or atheist, most of us, minus an occasional psychopath, aspire to teach our kids to be kind to one another. Arguably the most important lesson in socialization, though I am certain there are more than just a discussion on kindness. Teaching kindness is learning to treat each other as we would have others treat us. To be patient in a Starbucks lineup. To not cut lines. To not shoot someone in the car next to us because they cut us off. We teach our kids to understand their siblings' perspective, even if they're frustrating them. We teach them how to listen. We teach them how to speak, how to discuss things respectfully. We teach them to listen, not to interrupt, to hold space for other people's emotions. We teach them they should be listened to, and they have something to say to. This is socialization. That schooled, six-hour-a-day experience, five days a week, nine months a year, class of 25 kids, well, there is no magic sauce in teaching kids socialization. There. Learning to be productive citizens of society, charitable, community-focused, by far the most difficult aspect of socialization is teaching our children, not by the words we use, the consequences we respond with, when we're trying to teach them to do things in a kinder way, or deciding how to help them learn kindness, but rather recognizing that they're not taught by our words. More is caught than taught. Lessons and attitudes are caught by our lives. Who we are rubs off on our kids and creates their greatest socialization lesson. By far, the toughest work of homeschooling our kids is understanding how intricately we affect their souls with the stories of our lives and the attitudes of our hearts. It also happens to be one of the most compelling reasons to homeschool to have an impact on our kids. At the end of our field trip to that cafe, I wanted to say thank you to that random stranger. In the end, I just accepted that stranger's compliment point blank no discussion required. I appreciated it. My heart was warmed by it. The hard work that I put in every day is well worth the effort, and it is nice to be recognized. So what's the secret to homeschooled kids socialization? There isn't one, but you already knew that. I would love to learn more about who you are, So introduce yourself at the Homeschool Mama self-care Instagram page or the Facebook group, the Homeschool Mama support group, so we can support and encourage each other in our homeschool challenges. While you're there, you can check out my book of homeschool encouragement, Homeschool Mama self-care, Nurturing the Nurturer. If you're a homeschool mama looking for a mentoring group to gain clarity, confidence, and vision in your homeschool, to create a plan to nurture the nurturer and be intentional in how you show up in your homeschool, ask me about the Homeschool Mama Retreat. All the show notes and links to this episode will be found at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. Until next time, I hope you and your kids have a charmed week, or if you're having one of those weeks, I hope you can reframe your challenges into your homeschool charms.